All right, we'll begin with an op opening comment from Coach Patino, and then we'll get, take questions for the student athletes. And when we're done with them, we'll dismiss them and we'll go back to the coach. So, Rick. Well, we're excited to be in Indianapolis. It's a short trip for us. And um, I, I know our fans will be excited about it. This is a great venue for college basketball, and we're, um, we're super pumped to be in the NCAA tournament. Okay, questions for the, for the players? And raise your hand, and we'll get a mic to you. Don't be brief. Right here, Tim. Tim Sullivan, Career Journal. Donovan, can you count how many different defenses you guys have played during the course of the season and how many of those you feel confident in? Question for Donovan. Um, there are a lot. There are a lot of different forms of it, I should say. You know, they're all pretty much the zone's strictly the zone, but there's different forms of it. So I can't really, I wouldn't say count on my hand, but um, there's definitely a, a, a large amount and a surplus of defenses that we definitely have throughout the entire, that we've used throughout the entire year. All right, Andy. Uh, to Donovan and, and Dang. Um, since you guys lost in the ACC tournament in Brooklyn, what have practices been like and what has been the focus? Thank you. So Donovan, let's start with you. Um, we just, we looked at that loss and we, there were many times where we just were complacent when we got the lead, we kind of let up and um, we fouled a little bit. So now in practice we came back and just came out with tremendous energy. You know, Dang uh, led a, a bunch of practices with his energy and the, and the way he talked and Mango and guys who have been there. They definitely led the practices. You know, coach is always honest about talking on defense, and defense wins championships, and that's been the main focus throughout these practices. Dang. Uh, I think for us, it just showed us um, the urgency we have to play with because, you know, we went up there for one game and we had to go back home. So, you know, we kind of felt, you know, how bad it felt um, to lose in the first round and, and go home. And, you know, approaching practices, we just came with a lot of energy, just keying in on the little stuff uh, that lost us the game and just listening to coach. Questions, please. Right. Ken Taylor from Wave TV in Louisville. Then, when you have a team that has so many guys who shoot the three well, what what are the keys to defending that, not giving them open looks? For Dang, uh, I think um, just uh, playing with high hands and uh, taking away their attempt. Uh, we know they're a great shooting team, but you know we have a lot of size and length, and you know we can switch on a lot of different occasions, and we just have to make sure. We uh, play with a lot of energy and, you know, on the catch, just be there on the catch. Right here. Uh, Coach Megan McEwen, Wish TV here in Indianapolis. Big news out of the Big Ten. Tom Green fired earlier today here in Indy. Um, just your reaction to the – we're going, to, we're going to wait for Coach uh, – we'll for continue for the student athletes, and then we'll get, oh, come back to Coach. excuse me, sorry. That's okay. Unless we have, yeah, Tim. Dang, how is the the urgency different in, when you're playing in elimination games than during the regular season? Do you feel any differently? Do you prepare any differently? Dang. Uh, well, you know, if you lose, that's it. You know, in the regular season, you, you you always had another game that you can bounce back off. But you know, if you lose, that's it. We're going back to workouts, and you know, it's going to be tough for our guys, especially the seniors we have. And guys like Tony Hicks, who uh, haven't been at the tournament level, you know, it really hurts for them. So, I mean, we just make sure we go out there and just play for our brothers. Anything else for the players? Okay, guys, you're, you're dismissed. Now we'll go back for uh, Coach Patino. Thank you. Tim? Right here. Uh, Rick, Ray Harper was in here earlier, and he, he said that uh, you saw more defenses from his team than he's seen. Um, I think his exact quote was, he's seen some that I don't even know we do. Uh, he also credited you with being having the ability to figure things out like no one else. What, what is it about your approach to postseason particularly that has made you so successful, even a higher winning percentage? than regular season? Well, we try to build to this point all season. As, as I've stated many times to the Louisville media, we started out a very inexperienced basketball team. We had our leading scorer coming back with nine points a game in Quentin Snyder. This was the most difficult team I've coached since I've been a head coach in terms of teaching fundamentals and all the nuances that make a 
defense successful or an offense successful. The great thing about these guys is they're so willing to learn, and uh, we kept getting better week by week. And in the last 10 days, I've seen significant improvement, and that's what you want going into the tournament is you want to build up to improvement going into March. And I think these guys are ready for uh, the challenge. Uh, we, we didn't get too down about the Duke loss. We just worked on the things we needed to work on. And um, sometimes it's a good lesson because you're, you're so fired up to go to Brooklyn and all of a sudden it's over, you're returning home and we wanted to stay an extra day and just practice and experience New York a little bit and we just headed back and uh, didn't even get a chance to do that. So it, it's, it is a good experience when you lose and you have that feeling of emptiness. Right here, Jerry. In Lexington here, a leader. Rick, uh, you guys are the much better seed, obviously. How do you try to make sure your guys have the proper urgency, the proper uh, motivation to beat a team you're a big favorite against? You know, we don't pay any attention to lines or, or seeds. We just pay attention to what the other team runs, how to stop it, where, we, where they may be vulnerable for us to score. We, we know enough, you know, this year, a long, long time ago, and I took his advice, uh, God rest his soul, Howard Garfinkel said to me when I be just became a young head coach, he said, let me tell you what Everett Case used to say if you have an inexperienced team. And I interrupted him and said, well, who's Everett Case? And he said, well, I was a bird dog for him back in the day at NC State. And he said, take an inexperienced team, put the toughest schedule you can muster to them, and you'll know come March if you have a good team, if they've survived that schedule. Well, we played the number one ranked schedule in the nation this year, and the guys have survived, and it made that competition made us better. But along the way, we gave the same effort with every single opponent we have played. So I, I think the guys have tremendous respect for Jacksonville State. Uh, we don't talk about wh where they're seeds. We just talk about what they do well. We have, uh, as a coaching staff, we have uh, great respect for what Ray does. I've coached against him many times, and uh, they're very sound defensively, very sound offensively, so, and they're shooting the ball great, much better than any point in the season in the last four games. Over here. Coach uh, Kent Taylor from Wave TV in Louisville. You have five assistants in this tournament with teams. Is Mike Bellato is he ready to take that next step? His name's been mentioned with Arkansas State. Is, is that fair to say that he's ready to make the jump? You know, I have a philosophy with assistant coaches. I've had it for a long time, and it, I got it from UB Brown when I worked with him. Back then, there was only one assistant on the bench, and then Richie Adubato was on the road faxing me all the plays of the other team back then. And every single day in practice, UB challenged me to act like a head coach. And every day, he'd come to me and say, what do you have for me today? He wanted innovative ideas, new things to come up with, new plays, whether it's an out-of-bounds play. He wanted new ideas. And God forbid if you didn't have an idea behind that. And I do the same thing with with Ralph Willard, Kevin Willard, Mick Cronin, Tubby Smith, um, now Kevin Keats, um, I'm, I'm leaving out Reggie Theus, uh, I said Mick, it, all these guys, is I challenge them to act like a head coach, bring new ideas every single day. And even with my son, I never forget this, we were getting ready to play Florida, and he, he said, Dad, is it okay if somebody takes the scalp before that game he said, I can't, my eyes are just bloodshot. I need to focus in on that. And I said, get Visine. You're doing every scout. And don't, don't say it again. And I was so tough on my son uh, to do every single scout, which I've never done before, the same way UB was on me. And um, I think it pays off because Mike Bellotto right now is at the same level as all those guys I just mentioned because he came in a, a very hungry, enthusiastic, hardworking coach and now he's learned uh, a certain point to take over his own job. He's more than ready. I just want him to make sure. I don't want him to leave. I want him to stay. And the same thing with Kenny and David, but I just want to make sure he takes the right job uh, because certain guys sometimes take the wrong job. Right here. It's a long-winded answer, but I hope that sufficed. Whitney Harding, WHAS 11 in Louisville. Rick, you guys missed out on this last year, so what's it like to be back? It's always my favorite time of year. When I was in the pros, I missed it terribly. You know, all the guys on the bus and the pros were talking about uh, what team they're picking. And um, it's just an exciting time of year because you realize 
It's Russian roulette. Anybody can beat you on a given night. You don't shoot well. They shoot great. You, you can get beat. It's not always the best team because it's not a series. So it, it's a lot of fun. So many prognosticators picking. Um, my wife uh, texted me this morning and said, this person's picking you to go with this, this person. I said, yeah, I just worked out at the Y and somebody was telling me we're gonna, go, we're gonna go far. And that guy at the Y is every bit as good as the people you just mentioned. <laughs> so it's, everybody's got an opinion. Um, nobody's ever right, nobody has that bracket. I think ESPN's up to what, 10 million uh, brackets right now. And um, I always tell a funny story because when I was in the pros, I did a horrible job with the bracket. We had a neighborhood in New York Everybody filled out their brackets, and um, this guy, Angelo, won the bracket because Angelo picked Valparaiso to go far because you get so many points with your seed. And he thought, he was from Italy, and he thought Valparaiso was an Italian university. So uh, that was when uh, Drew was making those shots. So it's just a matter of luck. It's a lot of fun. It's the most fun time because, you know, Super Bowl's very big in our country, but, you know, it's two teams. If you're not a fan of those two teams, you want to tune in and watch it, but there are so many fans of every school waiting to be Cinderella, waiting to get to the Final Four, and it's a, to me, it's just a magical time. <laughs> yes, mascots, that's a good way, too. <laughs> Tim? Rick, when you come out of a, a, a long conference season, do you change your routine, your approach, when you have only a few days to, to prepare for an unfamiliar foe? We don't change our approach to scouting, but we change our approach to how we address the game. And um, that's something between um, our team and the coaching staff, the way we approach it. And uh, it changed, but we don't change in terms of scouting and preparation and what we're going to do. With this, yeah, risk of overload if you give them too much. With this team, uh, you don't want to give them too much. This is a team that. Um, Works very hard, but you, you don't want to give them too much. It's not their strength. Over here. Hey, Coach. Megan McEwen, Wish TV in Indianapolis. Um, just big news out of the Big Ten. Tom Crean fired earlier today. Your reaction to this time of year with the hirings and firings and how hard it is to win in college basketball? Well, it's the thing I don't like about the business when you see someone who works as hard as Tom get fired. You know, I thought I, when I took over the University of Kentucky, it was as low as it could possibly get uh, in every aspect until Tom Crean took over Indiana, it was even lower. Now we were on probation for two years, but Tom Crean took over a team that um, couldn't win, period. And he took it from the bottom to winning a couple of conference championships. And the good thing about it is everybody in our business knows that Tom uh, is an outstanding teacher, coach, uh, a workaholic, and he'll land on his feet. So it's uh, not always that way for other coaches. Uh, so Tom has done a great job at Indiana. They, they were probably both ready for a change, and Tom will land on his feet and be better than ever. Coach Chris Labar, Tom Leach Productions. You mentioned you have the number one strength of schedule. Who's the best team you played? Well, interesting enough, the most difficult team for us is Virginia. And I was having lengthy conversations with Kevin Keats. He called me and said, I, I need to know how to play Virginia. I said, call Notre Dame, don't call me. Uh, but we talked in length about how we should beat Virginia. Virginia's tough for us because you have to beat them off the bounce. You can't run offenses necessarily. The most physically talented team, there's a lot of them, whether you name Kentucky. Indiana was great before their only injuries. Kentucky's terrific, Baylor's terrific, Wichita State's terrific, we played them, Purdue's terrific, played them. Of course, Duke and Carolina and Virginia and Notre Dame, you know, it's, uh, I can't tell you, uh, Virginia's the best defensive team, Notre Dame and Duke are the best offensive team, Carolina's the best break team, best rebounding team. So, you know, they have so much talent that it depends on matchups. Matchups are a big deal in the NCAA. Over here, and then we'll come back. Rick, I'm not trying to draw parallels to Louisville and Syracuse, but they were on probate or the postseason ban, go to the Final Four. Postseason ban, obviously, you guys are in a little better position. You talked about it being a magical time. What did you miss the most about not participating a year ago? Well, it happened late, so we didn't anticipate it, all the penalties. You know, we played this year without 
two scholarships basketball players and has made our backcourt really, our backcourt lacks depth. And one of the difficult things about the game against Duke is Snyder and, um, and Donovan were taking out of the game because of phantom fouls. Like uh, Barry for North Carolina was taken out with a phantom foul. So those things happen both ways, against you and for you. And we don't have depth. But the difficult thing about last year was our culture as a basketball team, especially in the humility department, was changed tremendously by Damian Lee and Trey Lewis. And that's what hurt the most, that those two guys transferred to Louisville to play in the NCAA tournament, and uh, they never got a chance to play. But they did change the culture of our basketball team, becoming a very humble group. Mm -hmm. uh, Rick John Clay, Lexington Air Leader. Tim alluded to your postseason record. Aside from talent, is there one thing in particular in your experience that you feel like a team has to have to do well in this tournament? Well, different, you know, different teams that you coach – when I coached the 96 team at Kentucky, the most important thing was to just keep them grounded and humble because they, I felt the only way we could lose with that team was to beat themselves. With the 96 team, uh, the 2013 team that won championship, I felt we had to confuse people with our defenses. So every team brings different things to the table. And this team is far different than any team I've coached. And the thing I'm trying to do with this basketball team is get them relaxed, get them to have fun, because there's very few of these guys have competed in the tournament. Even though the schedule has prepared us for the competition, suddenly they have the media all around, they're talking constantly, they're, they're looking at, uh, they turn on ESPN and everybody has an opinion, so the time is different for these guys and they're not used to it. We went to a Final Four in 12, and those guys, like Villanova is today, are so hungry to get back because they tasted that in their mouth. This team hasn't tasted that yet, so it'll be interesting to see how they respond tomorrow. Here. Hey, Coach, Jim Ozarski with the Cincinnati Inquirer. I, I don't know if you've gotten to know John Brandon at all, but uh, up at Northern Kentucky, um, maybe from afar, I mean, taking a first-year eligible program, nine wins a year ago, to the tournament this year. Um, again, I'm not sure if you know him or remember him playing against your 96 yes. team um, under Billy, but uh, just some thoughts there on maybe the job he does or maybe how difficult that is. to Well, enjoy him. He'll be gone if he gets one win. No, I'm only kidding. <laughs> um, you know, it's not easy. It's just the same as Grand Canyon's going through now. It's not easy to go from to build a program that way, and um, I'm really impressed uh, with what he's done. Um, it's exciting to see for Northern Kentucky. Um, it must be really exciting for them to be playing the University of Kentucky, you know, it's, uh, in some forms. <laughs> um, but, you know, it's... It's a great tribute to those guys. They're going to get a big taste of the NCAA tournament, playing against one of the premier story traditions in all of basketball, and, and they're from the same state. So it's going to be very exciting for them, and he's done a fabulous job. Anything else for Coach? Thank you. Thanks, Rick.